Hi, and welcome again to part 4 of the hands-on sessions for DLB foam. This is Mahmoud Gadalla, and in this video, I will demonstrate the usage of DLB foam on a built-in tutorial, namely the Counterflow Flame 2D, using the GRI mechanism that we have previously compiled using PyJack, as it is shown in part 3 of these videos. After sourcing OpenFoam 8 and navigating to its run directory, we assume that DLB foam has been successfully compiled. And that the GRI mechanism files have been successfully generated using PyJack, as they have been already demonstrated in the previous videos. Now, let's copy the built-in tutorial Counterflow Flame 2D GRI. After that, we need to update the sub-dictionaries to use DLB foam and the analytical Jacobian. First, one easy option is to copy and paste from the include example file that has been generated after the mechanism compilation. So we comment the old thermophysical file of the mechanism. Then, we need to update the chemistry properties dictionary to use load balancing and reference mapping features. And for that, we can simply follow the instructions in the readme on the DLB foam GitHub repository. Then we activate the load balancing. And finally, we activate the reference mapping. And here, since in our case, 
It's a counterflow flame where the fuel port is pure methane and the oxidizer port is pure air. So the oxidizer mass fractions here is set correctly, but the fuel mass fraction needs to be updated to CH4. And also we need to update the thermophysical dictionary for the mechanism. Now, we are ready to run the tutorial case. For the domain decomposition, let's do some small changes. So the number of subdomains, let's change it to eight. And also in the method, let's use the Scotch algorithm for domain decomposition. And now let's execute the decompose power utility. And finally, we the reacting foam application in parallel. After the simulation using DLB foam is finished, we can see that it took about 600 seconds, which is roughly 10 minutes of wall clock time. So now let's repeat the same simulation, but using the standard chemistry model. And now let's just change the domain decomposition to be the same as the one that we run for DLB4. And now let's run the same case. We can already see here that the integration is quite slower compared with the previous simulation using DLB4. Finally, after both simulations are finished, we know that while DLB foam took about 10 minutes, here, using the standard chemistry model, the simulation took about 45 minutes to complete. Of course, the performance and speed up can vary depending on various factors, such as the case complexity, the domain decomposition algorithm, and the capacity and availability of the computing resources. In this simple 2D reacting case, and using only a personal computer, there was a speed up factor of about 5. In more complicated 3D reacting cases, with thermochemical stratification and stronger load imbalance, we can expect a larger speed up factor. As a last remark, we also highlight the DLB Foam Advanced Tutorials repository on GitHub. 
which includes various benchmark test cases that demonstrate the scaling capability and computational efficiency of DLB foam on rather advanced configurations, reaching a speed-up factor up to almost two orders of magnitude.